All right. So this is a question sent to me by a Year 12 Specialist Maths student. We are going to go through it. We're going to be a little bit fancy with a couple of the things that we do. So play along at home. So particle moves in a straight line such that its velocity in meters per second, units, units, units. Quickly make a note of that. And and position x in meters are related by this function. Okay, part A is asking us to find x in terms of t seconds. So t is in seconds, important. t is strictly positive. We like to know that. And we have an initial condition. So that's really useful. Let's have a look at what we have. So we have v is equal to 1 plus e to the negative 2x. Now hopefully you know that v is equal to dx dt. So I can say dx dt is equal to 1 plus e to the negative 2x. Now we've got a bit of a problem here. When we're anti-differentiating, which is what we're going to want to do here, we need this denominator in our derivative to be the same variable. So we don't have that here, but we can force it by taking the reciprocal. So I'm going to make the claim that this is exactly the same as saying dt dx is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative 2x. Now, negatives I don't really like too much. I can't see a really obvious way to anti-differentiate this. So instead of trying to force anything, I'm going to make things a little bit nicer. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by e to the negative 2x, by, sorry, by e to the 2x on e to the 2x. And notice what that will give me. It will give me e to the 2x on top. It will give me e to the 2x plus 1 that negative 2x and that 2x will cancel. So I'm able now to say that I have, I'll move that in white, into t dx is equal to e to the 2x over 1 plus e to the 2x. Okay, and this means that t is equal to the integral of e to the 2x over 1 plus e to the 2x dx. And this is my anti-differentiation. So I'm going to anti-differentiate this, and I'm going to do that with a u substitution. Okay. So I'm going to let u equal 1 plus e to the 2x. Okay. And then I'm going to use the I'm going to use the differential for this. I think it's I think it's a little bit nicer. I get du is equal to 2e to the 2x dx. And this lets me say that one half du is equal to e to the 2x dx. And what this is going to let me do, notice I have e to the 2x dx, I have e to the 2x dx. So I can swap this guy for this guy. And I've already defined this as u right here. So now I have t is equal to the integral of one half on u du. So 1 half du has replaced that e to the 2x dx and u has replaced 1 plus e to the 2x. Tidy this up to be 1 half 1 on u du and then I can evaluate it to be 1 half natural log absolute value you. I'm not going to put the plus c in just yet. I don't think I need to. 
Um, so now we're going to sub our u value back in. So I get t equals 1 half natural log. Now I've omitted the absolute value, 1 plus e to the 2x plus c. Okay. So the reason I've been able to omit the absolute value and just have normal brackets here is because this guy is strictly positive. And no matter what x is, e to the power of anything is going to be a positive number, and I'm adding 1 to it, so it's going to always be positive. So I don't need those mod signs here. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. I'm going to rewrite this as 1 half natural log 1 plus e to the 2x equals t minus c. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that fraction, don't like fractions, so that becomes natural log 1 plus e to the 2x equals 2t plus c1. And c1 is just equal to negative 2c. Okay. Negative 2c is a constant because c is a constant. So c1 is a constant, so I don't need to have all of that extra stuff to confuse me. Now I'm going to use my log laws to get rid of that natural logarithm. So I get 1 plus e to the 2x equals e to the 2t plus c1. Now this is the same as e to the 2t times e to the c1. So I'm going to let a new variable a equal e to the c1. And this is going to be nice because I get 1 plus e to the 2x equals a e to the 2t. So I'm going to find a with the fact that x of 0 is 0. Okay, go back to the question. That was our initial condition. t is 0, x is 0. Okay, so 1 plus e to the 2 times 0 equals a e to the 2 times 0. So this pretty clearly implies that a equals 2, which means I have 1 plus e to the 2x equals 2 e to the 2t. So e to the 2x is 2e to the 2t minus 1. 2x is equal to the natural logarithm of 2e to the 2t minus 1. Now again, I don't need mod signs here because this is strictly positive. Okay, so I encourage you to prove that to yourself. Then I divide by 2, and I get x is 1 half natural log 2e to the 2t minus 1 meters. All right, so that's part A. So let's have a look at it in its entirety. So I know that v is dx to t. I know that I need the denominator, for lack of a better word, of my derivative func derivative symbol to be the same as the variables across here. So I can do that by taking the reciprocal. And then clean up this negative with some fancy multiplying by 1. Remember, this is just multiplying by 1. I then have this nice derivative present, which lets me do a u substitution. I used the differential here. You don't need to. There's lots of different ways you can do this. I like this method because it gives me a nice clean thing to substitute, but however you want to do it, it's fine. Uh, then I do my substitution. I left my mod signs in here at first because u is kind of vaguely defined at this stage. But once I get to here, this is pretty clearly defined. Even if x is negative, 
e to the x will be positive. I clean up my constants of integration. I keep them as simple as I can. You can leave it as c and, and do all of the manipulations in terms of c, and you'll, you'll end up in the same place. But I, I find that it tends to be more hassle than it is worth. OK, so now we want to find acceleration when t is natural log of 5. So for part b, I want a given t equals natural log of 5. The information that I have is that x is equal to 1 half natural log 2e to the 2x minus 1. And I also know from, from the question, so I found I found this, but from the question I know that v is equal to 1 plus e to the negative 2x. And I want a. So you're going to be tempted to differentiate this twice. Okay. I am hopefully going to convince you that that's not the best way to do it. You, you can do it, you'll end up with a quotient rule problem, and then you'll be substituting into a quotient rule with Euler's number involved. So it'll it's doable, and it will get you the right answer. It will absolutely get you the right answer. But we want acceleration, and we can use our formula sheet to see that acceleration is v to v dx. And we know v. So I can say, I can find the v dx. And the v dx is negative 2e to the negative 2x. And then I can find v to v dx. And that's just negative 2v e to the negative 2x. And then I can sub this into there. So I get a is equal to negative 2v, sorry, negative 2 1 plus e to the negative 2x times e to the negative 2x. Now you can expand this bracket, and it will work if you expand this bracket, but we'll have a power of 4. Uh, whether or not that's good is, up, is something that we can discuss, so I'm not interested in that. It seems hard. Here's a nice little mistake. Look at that x. That x should be a t. Sorry about that. So first thing I'm going to need to do using my method is find x given t equals natural log of 5. And that I can do pretty quickly. x given t equals natural log of 5 is 1 half natural log 2e to the 2. And that t becomes natural log of 5 minus 1, close bracket. So this gives me 1 half natural log of 2e to the natural log of 25 minus 1, log laws. My e cancels my natural log, so I get 1 on 2 natural log 50 minus 1, skip to the end, that is natural log of 7. Okay, so that's my displacement when t equals natural log of 5. Now I want my acceleration, and I can get that by subbing in. A given x equals natural log of 7 gives me negative 2, 1 plus e to the negative 2. Natural log of 7 e to the negative 2 natural log of 7. Sorry, that's a bit cramped. So I, I can start simplifying. This becomes negative 2, 1 plus e to the natural log of 1 on 49 log laws times e to the natural log of 1 on 49. These guys cancel. 
So I get negative 2 plus negative 2 times 1 on 49, bracket, bracket, times 1 on 49, which gives me negative 2 on 49 minus 2 on 49 squared, which will become negative 98 on 49 squared minus 2 on 49 squared, which is 100, negative 100, on 2,401, which is 49 squared. Okay. So by all means, you can, and I encourage you to attempt it, see what that looks like with differentiating twice, see if you prefer that method. I find for my money, this is a little bit more straightforward. I don't have to do any big numbers, except 49, but I had that written down already. I didn't do that in my head. But um, yeah, so whenever you see acceleration, yes, it's the second derivative of displacement, but there are also other definitions that are really useful on your formula sheet, okay? So I would encourage you to try the other definitions, see what you come up with, but um, yeah. So let's fix up our units. This is meters per second squared. And that is our answer. Okay, thank you. Hope that makes sense. Good luck.